Hi, I'm the Year 4 class teacher, Miss Maycock. I look forward to meeting you all throughout the school year, either in the playground or at parents' evening. I'm hoping this presentation answers all the questions you might have about Year 4, but if you have any others, feel free to grab me at the end of the day, or on Monday the 27th, there's going to be a meet the teacher sort of informal meeting that you're welcome to attend. So hopefully this answers some um, of the questions you might have about year four and sort of summarises what we're going to be getting up to this year. Thanks. In year four, some of the main aims are promoting self-motivation and positive attitude towards learning. So I'll be really looking out for and encouraging growth mindsets in the children. And they've been really working on thinking positively about their work, especially in English and maths. Uh, encouraging good manners and helpfulness, making sure they're being respectful towards others and um, helping out others around the school. They've been fantastic uh, this year. They've had uh, year one buddies and they've been looking out for them in the playground. That's been really kind and lovely to see. Um, developing organisational skills and presentation. So as they're getting older, encouraging them to, to take more res greater responsibility for their learning and they should use a bit of initiative a bit more. Focusing on our core skills in English, maths and science, seeing what we can do to develop them, especially with maths times table knowledge and English spellings. And they should all be confident with like capital letters and full stops and basic punctuation by the end of year four. Um, they're continuing to develop their speaking and listening skills, encouraging independence. I've sort of briefly mentioned that, but to do with the five B's that we use, which are the brain, body, book, board and boss. So having a think about have they used the four others before they come and ask a teacher for help. And just making sure they're prepared, ready for year five and six. So this is a sort of brief overview of what we'll be doing in year four. Um, each half term, We'll be covering a different theme and there'll be a curriculum map for each one. Uh, at the moment, our theme is the Romans that links to history, but we've also linked it to geography where they're finding Italy and Roman maps, linking it to PE where they were, uh, they became Roman soldiers. We'll link it to some artwork we'll be doing and it links to our English text we're doing. So each term, our topic will link to our English work as well. They're carrying on with the Read, Write, Ink spellings this year, but they do not have the logbooks anymore. We've got rid of the logbooks this year, so the spelling rules that we learn in school, they'll just do on Read, Writer when they're at home. But it will still be the same uh, system and structure to last year, and I'll explain a bit more about that on the homework slide. Um, the handwriting scheme we follow is pen pals and I don't know, I think actually year three is the first year they would have got pen licences, but next year and year six as well, we'll start them off on a pencil at the start of the year and they can try and earn their pen licence. Just to keep everybody, give everybody an equal chance and opportunity to earn one. And in case handwriting has regressed over the summer, I know some of them were struggling on the first day back because they hadn't been writing in a while. Um, but something that's a bit different this year is our math scheme. We've uh, switched over from Maths Mastery. Now we're looking at a scheme called Power Maths, where the lessons laid out, they start with um, sort of a power up starter activity. Then there's an image on the board to discover and we share ways we can solve the problem. We do a bit of I do, we do, you do activities to make sure everyone's confident with what we are doing and then they have some activities in a workbook that way they're all accessing the same thing doing the same thing but there's high, high levels of challenge for those that uh, want to deepen their understanding a bit better and at the end of each lesson there's a reflector so once we've gone through the answers and children have had a look and seen how how confident they were, had a look at um, correcting any mistakes and they've got a chance to reflect and either show that they now know how to work out the problems or just to deepen their understanding if they feel confident in that topic. Uh, we've 
French, they're carrying on with French this year, so they started that last year and will be building on that. They also do a daily mile every day. And another thing that happens in year four is there's a multiplication tables check. And I think this will be the first year they'll actually officially be doing it because I think COVID's affected uh, previous years. But at the end of year four, they'll be tested on all their times tables as um, government requirement as that's one of the aims by the end of the year four, they're fluent in their times table. So I'll be really pushing that. Every Friday we'll be um, testing them on their next challenge and they've got their checker um, trackers at home. And um, yes, I'm really gonna push for that this year. So I'll be practicing them where we can, listening to songs about times table. So any support you can give them at home or any encouragement Will be greatly appreciated and I've noticed from last year working in year five it definitely really makes a difference those that were fluent in their times tables were a lot more confident with their maths than those that weren't because the curriculum just expects them all to miraculously know all their times tables by year five so if they don't they're at a little bit of a disadvantage so here is like an outline of all the topics we'll be looking at this year. At the moment we are covering the Romans which has a link to history and we're reading Escape uh, from Pompeii and next term we'll be looking, or after half term sorry, we'll be looking at rivers which links to geography. I know in the past there has been a Sayers Croft sorry, trip um, at this point in the year but it's now going to be postponed and this class will do it when they're in year five purely because last year's year four didn't get a chance and now it's been rescheduled so every year we'll get a chance to go when they're in year five. Um, so I'll have a look at finding another trip that links to that topic. Uh, spring one, very exciting, we've got a chocolate topic which links to science when we're learning about digestion and we'll be reading Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and hopefully, I do still need to confirm it, there'll be a chocolate workshop being run in school so somebody will come in and they'll talk to us about the history of chocolate. We'll be learning a little bit about the Mayan culture as well in our history lessons and they'll hopefully get to make some chocolate. I'm looking forward to that uh, topic so I'm sure the children are as well. And spring two we're looking at inspiring Iceland and geography so we're looking at uh, glaciers and we'll be reading Arthur and the Golden Rope in our English sessions. Summer one, we've got ancient Greece as a history topic and we'll be looking at some Greek myths and I think also doing a little bit of work on fables as well. And finally, in our summer two, we'll be looking at robots. We'll be reading a book called The Iron Man by Ted Hughes for our English and that will link to our science. I think we're looking at electricity that term, so that will link to there and creating circuits and maybe creating uh, robots and hopefully we'll be able to get a trip in there in that term to the science museum as well so quite a few things to look forward to this year so in terms of behavior this year there'll still be class dojos and individual dojos and also i'll be looking at um table dojos so as a table working together to try and earn the most in a term and that will hopefully encourage good values and learning behaviours. I also try and do each Friday morning when they don't have collective worship a um, class celebrations assembly and that will be when I can award children with um, mathematics and reading writer certificates so if they've been on there they might be getting some dojos and any pen licence being awarded and that will help to sort of, uh, boost them as a class and as individuals and motivate them to work hard and following on from that there'll also be something called the extra mile board this year which is something new that we've um, started at St Mary's and that's to recognise children who are going above and beyond so that might be getting their homework done the night it's set putting their hand up in lots of different lessons helping uh, tidy up around the school without having been asked things like that and we're looking we still got the uh, six or is it seven hours now I think uh, ready responsible respectful resilient resourceful 
risk taker and um, but the main focus this year is on ready and responsible and respectful those three R's are our key focuses this year so any golden achievers certificates this year that will be what we'll be looking at for children who are showing that they're ready to learn they're taking responsibility for their learning and they're being respectful as well and the traffic lights are no longer a thing but if there are cases where children are showing um, unexpected behaviours in school there'll be a lot of restorative work done with them having chats with them talking about how we can address the problem and how we can go about resolving the problem and ensuring it won't happen again but hopefully we won't have to have too many of those this year so reading this year i'm sure it's the same as last year aim to read five times a week and get it recorded in reading records but this year and maybe they did also in year three they're allowed to add comments in themselves i understand as they're getting older they're probably reading a bit more independently and it also frees up your time a bit more so maybe if once or twice a week you're listening to them read the other times are happy for them to write the comments in themselves and listen to themselves read and it'll be the same with the green uh, for five comments yellow for one to four and a red mark zero comments but, but hopefully there won't be many red marks this year uh, they have their sign day where they can change their reading books and I'll aim to listen to every child read or myself or the teaching assistant will try and listen to every child read about once a fortnight there'll be a couple of children that will get a chance to be read with every week but the majority of the time it'll be once a fortnight and uh, every half term I'll get them to do some reading comprehension activities and I'll assess their reading level based on that and that will be the chance for them to move up a stage so homework this year uh, for the spellings our spelling rule will change every fortnight so every other Monday there'll be set a reading write, ready writer homework sometimes there may be a couple of exercises on ready writer because one will be um, sort of a one star level two star and three star and the children can choose their own from there so there might be a entry core and exit I think they refer to on there so they can choose the level of challenge they think they're at. And I've also put on Reading Writer our common exception words for this half term. So every half term, I'm sure you're familiar with um, the system, they have a new set of about 13, 10 to 13 words they need to learn for the spelling challenge. And then if they get them all right, they'll get a certificate. And another piece of homework they get is maths and that's on Mathletics and I'll set a couple of activities every week for them on there. I also run a homework club for the year fours on Friday lunchtime so if they are either stuck with an activity or they haven't had a chance to do the homework at home and would like to get it done um, at school instead they're welcome to stay with me at lunchtime they, when they're not eating their lunch of course and have a look at their Mathletics then. Just a couple more points before I finish this presentation. I'm sure you're all aware P days are Tuesday and Friday, so make sure your children are coming in wearing P kit on those days. Our show and tell day is Friday, but with that, try and encourage them now they're a bit older, only bringing a show and tell if it's something really important that they'd like to share with everybody and try and keep it as brief as possible because we've only got about 15 minutes every Friday to share and I know some children have quite long-winded show and tell sometimes. Uh, another thing, make sure to remind your children to bring their water bottle to school with them. I know a couple of them have been forgetting it as well a fruit snack because I think the mornings are quite full on so they get quite hungry before lunchtime and that way they, they aren't sort of complaining about hung being hungry after break time and um, any other notices I'll be putting out will probably be either in the Friday newsletter or an email out to you. Okay so that pretty much sums up what we'll be doing in year four so thank you very much for listening and hopefully I covered most of the questions or concerns you may have had about uh, year four and what we are 
up to in year four but if you have any other questions or concerns or anything feel free to come after school on monday the 27th of september and i'll be around and you can ask any questions and also you're welcome to pop by any day after school and ask anything as well but thank you